news you. We greet you in Jesus' joy this morning on this, uh, what uh, some call Easter tide is that Sunday after Easter that brings us together to, um, to celebrate the fact that he is living, reigning, ruling, he is alive, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, and I don't know about you, but there are a few signs around that let me know that he is soon to come. May not be while I'm alive, but I know he will come back and claim us as his own. We greet you in Jesus' joy. We thank God for uh, this Sunday morning. Again, we come to fellowship and bless the name of the Lord in a virtual worship online, and we thank God for all of the components and ministries that are working together in the pr presence of the Lord. We see many who are on Facebook tagging us now. We welcome in also our phone conference call audience. Uh, they are listening from New York and New Jersey and Chicago and South Carolina and Georgia and so we greet you this morning in Jesus' joy. Uh, we're continuing to lift up those who are in need in this critical time, and we pray God's blessings upon you, and as our congregational care team and class leaders are reaching out, we want to thank you for the just Herculean job that you are doing to stay in touch with our members and to reach out to know that God is blessing and moving uh, and making a difference, and we continue to lift up God's people uh, in this time, and we thank God for Reverend Kim Hutchison, our Director of Congregation of Care, Reverend Erica Barnes, who have been with us over the last several Sundays uh, in this virtual, socially uh, 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 spaced uh, uh, worship environment, and we thank God because normally this is Men's Sunday anyway, and so our men had wonderful fellowship on yesterday via Zoom, and uh, we thank God for Minister Rodney Taylor is here over our men's ministry and you heard the wonderful prayer, Reverend Ellis Lowe, and we're certainly glad to have them in the house of the Lord. There is a word from the Lord to encourage us on this morning, and we bless the Lord for his goodness and kindness to us, and thank God for all of the ministries that are operating to make sure that technology continues to allow us to share the living gospel through song, uh, through encourage, encouragement in the word, and we appreciate the Lord for his goodness. Father, but now we thank you and pray that as the word goes forth that you would touch and bless those who are listening look on all of those who are sick and shut in those who are bereaved we minister and lift them up to you oh god today in the name of jesus and we pray almighty god that you would just cause your grace and favor to rest mightily upon them today comfort those who bereave heal those that are sick and God, as uh, we see uh, your hand of mercy and grace, even in our congregation, we thank you for your healing touch. We thank you for the testimonies of those who have been healed and going through various uh, uh, sicknesses and ailments. But we know that you are God, and we just pray that you would continue to minister. Now let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said, Amen. Last couple of Sundays and in this Lenten season, as we move from Lent to Resurrection, my brothers and sisters, uh, we have been traveling in the book of John and uh, find that ourselves continuing to finish out uh, the book of John. We've got one more chapter, and uh, whatever the Lord says, we will try to share that. If not, you certainly read it on uh, your own. But last Sunday, we looked in John chapter 20, and we'll come back to another portion of that. And we saw that on uh, last Sunday that finally there was some good news. Uh, yeah, there was some good news. In the midst of everything that was going on, there was some good news. And those who are watching on the screen, you see the notes uh, from Sunday uh, that Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and her faith and love caused her to go to the tomb. And uh, then if we're going to see the good news in the midst of a bad situation, we need to see with different eyes, speak with different lips, believe with a different heart, but then we've got to hear a familiar voice. Out of all of the voices that we have heard, the voice that we hear, need to hear the most, is the one that that hymn writer says, I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses. And that voice, 
I hear. And we thank God for that voice that guides us into uncharted waters. And so while we thank God for different eyes, different lips, and a different heart, we thank God for the familiar and trustworthy voice of the Lord speaks to us in our most difficult times. We come now into uh, the next portion of this text that was read in your hearing, and it begins over at verse uh, 19, and uh, you saw uh, in the text where uh, Jesus decides to make a visit, and he appears in the house, and he just simply says, peace, peace. For just a few moments today, I want you to think on this topic, a virtual visit. A virtual visit. Uh, it, it is interesting that we find ourselves in difficult times and a strange time, new territory, and uh, over all of these weeks we've been having conversations about things we normally wouldn't have conversations about, save those who are in that line of work, and uh, things like Zoom meetings and Facebook Live, and for those whose grandchildren may not yet have informed them, yes, Twitter does have its own television network called IGTV, uh, and for those just parenthetically who are connected with me in that regard, uh, there is someone who has taken my picture and put up a different account, but that's not me. Uh, uh, you, you might have heard of things like Periscope and uh, come along in Skype and now uh, even uh, freeconferencecall.com which recognizes that it bring, brings so many services particularly to the church world even when we call in as host they have a new greeting that, that says you know thank you because of what you're doing you're helping people around the world who would not be able to communicate to be able to communicate and then uh, in the business world, many of us have already known about Cisco's WebEx, uh, where we communicate and have uh, private meetings with those who are thousands of miles away. And then there is go to meeting, there is go to webinar. And so all of these vehicles now, all of a sudden, uh, have zenith to new importance in our lives that we can connect with each other virtually. Indeed, it blew, it blew me away. It just blew me away. I uh, don't know why I never thought about it. I've, I've been on Facebook for years, and then all of a sudden, when now I've got to sit at home, and how do I, what's the best way to communicate Bible study? We jump out to Facebook Live a few weeks ago and just share a Bible study from home where we were, and over 3,000 people touched, took, a ta took time to pass by that Bible study, and it is causing a change in our lives. Last night, as I was finalizing notes and study, having uh, uh, engaged in uh, some balanced news approach, and what I mean by that is uh, uh, I listen and, and, and I talked with one member this week. I listen primarily, and people know me, that I listen to CNBC, which is the financial, used to be financial news network, and uh, in my home I play it, keep touch with that, because I realize that a lot of things and issues that face us uh, are seen through the eyes of the dollar. And, and, and at the end of the day, it's not so much about Republican, Independent, Green Party, uh, Democrat. It's about the dollarcrat. Hello, somebody. Uh, that's what's most important. And so, uh, I, I had a wonderful uh, 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 time last night as I turned on my television to watch uh, Global Citizen and that beautiful production last night which tapped into artists and scientists and professors and uh, medical doctors from all over the world. And uh, not only did I have it on the TV, I found myself uh, like one of our uh, phone conference call listeners, Sister Haley, this week. She uh, tunes in from New York and we're praying God's blessings upon them and their family. And, and she 
tuned in and I said to her after, after Bible study was over, I said, I see you on Facebook, but you're also on the phone conference call. And she said, Rev, yeah, I struck both of them to make sure I don't miss. Hello, somebody. Amen. And, and, and so it, it just encouraged my heart because here's somebody who's retired and realizing that, hey, I want a word. I got to make sure I'm tuned in. So if the conference call don't work, Pastor, I got you on Facebook. I was like, all right. And so I, I found myself last night to pausing from the study of the text to take a view of the context. Oh, I just said something up in here. Uh, uh, and and, and, and it, 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 it amazes me that we can go through these kinds of things and, 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 and some be oblivious to what the reality is around us. People are dying. People are suffering. People are going through misery. People are afraid. And, and so God calls us to be in tune, not just with the text, but also with the context. And so I found myself watching Global Citizen on my television as well as on Facebook Live. And on Facebook Live, there are about 85,000 live viewers last night, 90,000. It was depending on who was singing. And, of course, nobody expected uh, Beyonce to, sh uh, sh uh, uh, to show up. And you know, I, I mean, it was just a major piece, and you could sense uh, the warmth and connection. And, and, and so it was an interesting experience, and there were folks who were commenting as the show was going on. Most of them were very positive. Some were very negative. People from all over the world. And you know what? I did something I don't normally do. I started hopping into the conversation, and there was a, a, a Caucasian a woman who got on and said, you know, my husband is one of those first responders. He's resting now because he has to go to work. And I just typed and said, thank God I'm praying for you all and praying for him. When he wakes up, tell him God bless you. And uh, she said a thank you. And just connecting with people that you just would not normally connect with. But because of a crisis, we now come together as common humanity, realizing that it matters not how much money we have, how much power we have, where we live, what our party affiliation is, what we're going through right now calls us to come together yeah. and realize that rich and poor, black and white, brown and yellow, all dying, old and young are all being affected by the crisis that we're in. And so I watched that and, and certainly uh, shared with others to tune in because it inspired and blessed my heart as John Legend and Sam Smith and Mick Jagger and all of these great artists and people, LL Cool J. But I was really touched by a young lady that works at the Holy Cross Medical Center in New Jersey. A young singer, African-American woman, a young singer, on her way to pursue her singing career. And when she heard of the crisis and the need, she came back to the hospital where she works and says, I need to be in place doing what I need to do because the need of humanity calls me in this experience. And those of you who saw it last night, you saw and heard her beautiful voice. And while she was singing, I just prayed. I said, God, she is on a worldwide television show with John Legend and Usher and everybody else. I said, God, you're you going to work this out for her. And, and, and I believe that he, he's going to make a way because she took time to care for God's humanity. I said, God won't just bless her and open up doors for her. She won't even have to go by. What's that show where they do all the, you know, the singing? They, she won't even have to go by that show. She'll just go straight to a wonderful singing contract. And we just believe that. So we walk through the heart and mind of humanity through virtual experience. We, we connected to conduct critical business this week. We, we shared with our families to keep in touch. And yesterday had a wonderful morning experience with the men's fellowship via Zoom. And I'm here to tell you when I saw some of the brothers that I had not seen in weeks, oh my God, it was like a family reunion. And the best we could do was give each other a virtual hug. Jesus, uh, it, it, it lets us know that uh, Mark Zuckerberg and 
and, 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 and the creators of Twitter, Jack Dorsey and all of those guys, Stephen Jobs, the late Stephen Jobs, and even Bill Gates were not the inventors of the virtual visit. <laughs> the, the text tells us that Jesus was practicing virtual visits long before uh, we ever knew what it meant to have, a, let alone 3G, 4G, now 5G LTE. Jesus knew what it meant long time ago before we had HDMI or 4K as it is now. He has already appeared to Mary and revealed himself. Pete and John, as we noted last week, they've already left the tomb. Peter has left bewildered and, you know, still puzzled about the questions. And John has left believing. Yep, he did just what he said he would do. God knew he was going to do it. Yeah. And, and, and so they go back to this room that, I, I believe that Jesus had the foresight to lease in advance because he knew that's where his church would begin. And so for, for those who think that churches have to have all of the elaborate uh, trappings that we do now, just look at the last few Sundays in America when almost all of the 350,000 churches in America have been emptied, billions of dollars in real estate. And so Jesus had the foresight to lease this room that we call the upper room, and somewhere in the myriad of events as we get past the Sabbath into the first day of the week, the disciples find themselves in this room, and they are behind locked doors. Uh, they're behind locked doors, and Jesus makes a virtual visit. <laughs> I, I, I'm so glad. I, I'm so glad. Right? I, I, I'm so glad that he made a virtual, a virtual visit uh, because that's the good news for us today that while we're in stay at home that Jesus will make a virtual visit wherever you are. Can I walk through the text for just a few moments? Uh, 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 things about a virtual visit and there are protocols and there are certain uh, uh, etiquette things that you we carry out as we're in this world of social media there are the do's and the don'ts and things that help it to go better and I think uh, we communicated that in an email earlier this week but the thing that I like about Jesus is uh, number one that Jesus manages his own schedule uh, I, I, I just said something. He manages his own schedule. If I'm going to set an appointment with professionals, what I want to do is put that time into my calendar, and I put the block of time. I put where we're going to meet. If there's conference call information, I need to click join Zoom so that the Zoom information gets uploaded. And then I sent out the invite for people to be able to meet and they will either say yes or no or suggest another time and then we'll hook up and hopefully meet at the agreed upon time. But I like Jesus because Jesus will not tell us what his schedule is. He manages his own schedule, and he doesn't send confirmations as to when he wants to meet with you. Well. It's on his time and not our own clock. It's on his time and not our own calendar. And so they said on that first day of the week, that evening, that Jesus just decides, I'm going to show up. The rules of virtual engagement say that they, they, we must be scheduled so that both sides will be able to connect when ready. But I'm so glad that Jesus has decided I'm going to make a surprise visit. Now, for those who follow the, uh, the, 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 the chronological order of the appearances of Jesus so you can know where we are, we're in John chapter 20, but over in Luke chapter 24, uh, you'll hear the testimony that Jesus makes a virtual visit. He makes this virtual visit with two travelers that have all the way down, heading down to Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and he just comes alongside them. Him. He has the virtual visit. He stops by their home. He prays. He breaks bread. And then he ends the meeting. 
<laughs> and once he clicks in meeting, he's just gone. And, and those disciples sitting at the table have now run all the way back to Jerusalem. They are already in the upper room. Watch this. And while they are sharing the testimony of their visit with Jesus, that the, while they are sharing the experience that he gave us a virtual visit, while he, he got talked with us along the road that our hearts were burning on the inside as he communed with us and while they're talking he shows up <laughs> uh, when, 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 when Jesus manages his own schedule I imagine that he's looking for those who are calling on his name Ah, uh, there are those calling on his name, whether you're at your kitchen table, whether you're in your office, whether you're uh, cleaning up in the living room or wherever you are, when you call his name, he will visit. Yeah, yeah. So I'd like to think that those two Emmaus travelers were one of the reasons why Jesus made his own visit and scheduled his own way. And so when we ask the question, well, where is my Jesus when I need him? He's on the way. Uh, Martha said, Jesus, if you would have physically been here. Yeah. I, 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 I sent a messenger for you to come get you. And, 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 and you sent me an email and said, you'll be along shortly. Uh, you, you sent me a text message like, I'm on the way, and if you would have been here, then this would not have happened. And, and, and Jesus has to remind uh, Martha, Martha, you need to understand, whenever I visit, things change. And guess what? Even if I'm not here in person, I am still virtually everywhere at the same time. So Jesus manages his own schedule. And our mothers and fathers came to conclude that. What did they say? He might not come when you want him to come, but he is always on time. On time. Uh, uh, he manages his own schedule. Um, second thing I observe in the text uh, is that, number two, Jesus comes when we're not at our best. <laughs> he comes when what? <laughs> he comes when we're not at our best. Uh, uh, the, the rules are, and th th this happened to us in a meeting, uh, one of the Zoom meetings of the last couple of weeks. I'm not calling any names. Those who may have been watching be in tune to that meeting. And, and so as I was managing the participants coming into the meeting, I, I, I you know, noted one to, you know, we don't see you. We need to see you because it is a visual meeting. We need to see and affirm and all of that. And, 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 and the person responded, uh, Pastor, I'm not presentable uh, to be in the video meeting right now. And so while we were in the organizational process before we had gone live, they accidentally hit the video and, 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 and you know, and, and I'm just going to leave that right where it is. And, uh, uh, and Jesus comes when we're not at our best. And, 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 and so Jesus manages his own schedule. He comes when he wants to. And then he comes into this room. And the Bible says that the disciples were hiding in that room because of their fears. They were afraid. And, and brothers, you know, we walked through a, a little bit of a word yesterday on that. These disciples are in a stay-at-home, self-imposed order. And they are afraid. Now, rightly so, because they didn't know if what they did to Jesus, what those, that they were going to have the same fate in their own life. But you know, sometimes we impose things on ourselves. And that's why in crisis you have to know with whom you believe and place your trust. And even though we have fears and, though, and concerns and anxieties and things that rush, we must always remember that there is someone who is still ultimately in control. And so Jesus comes 
burst into the room with a virtual visit, and he catches the disciples when they are not at their best. They are afraid. What is fear? False evidence appearing real. Can, can I give you another one? Fear. Focus on everything that actualizes in this realm. Let me back that up. Focus on everything that actualizes in this realm. Uh, 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 let me say that one more time. Fear is when you focus on everything that actualizes in this realm. When you focus on every White House press conference in this realm. When you focus on every Wall Street report in this realm. When you Focus on everything going around you with all of the reports of disparity and all of that. Not to say that we ought not be abreast, but when your focus is there, it will cause you to have fear because there is so much uncertainty in this realm. But I hear Paul say to the church, he said, now wait a minute, wait a minute. If you're going to make it in this world, you've got to change your focus and set your affection on things above and not on things beneath. And when you change your focus, it all of a sudden puts everything into perspective. So there's a lot of focus on everything that actualizes in this realm, a lot of false evidence that appears real. Can I give you some false evidence that appears real? Uh, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, the, the founder of Microsoft, great uh, uh, humanitarian, uh, but people didn't understand uh, this whole issue of vaccines and identification. And so I had a, a, a great leader call me uh, in, in another realm, and, and, and he said to me this week, Pastor, I just needed a great leader. I'm, I'm a great leader. I mean, I'm significant, and, but not in the church world. In another realm, called me and said, Pastor, I need your, your biblical, your spiritual insight about this uh, because of People are inferring certain things, and, and I wanted to understand it. And he said, you know, this whole thing about uh, 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 controlling the birth rate and all of that. And I said to him very simply, I said, well, you know, uh, you, you have to understand, uh, you can take an average family in an undeveloped nation like Africa, and I've heard hundreds of testimonies where men and women in their 30s but might have four or five children, but they also have three or four that have died. Uh, and, and, and so the, the, men, the thought is, uh, is, it's not about controlling the number of births. What Gates was saying is, let's get them vaccinated. Let's give them appropriate health care. Because when families understand that my two or three will make it to adulthood, that I won't keep trying to have four, five, six, seven. And, 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 I, and when I said that, he said, well, Pastor, he said, that's interesting. He said, how do you know that? I said, because I've talked to mothers and fathers in West Africa, Central Africa. Africa, East Africa, Southern Africa, and it's just a part of the culture. It generally, for every four or five children you have, they're going to tell you, well, I had another one that died at three, another one that died at seven, another one that died at 11. And I said, but until somebody engages me in the conversation, I won't even bring it up because I hadn't thought about it. And he said, Pastor, you just helped me understand something. And so I said, now take that and overlay it to what Gates is saying. He's not saying that. Why? Because you have to understand the person from Scripture. Jesus said, if you want to know where somebody is, or you want to know what's in their heart, check out what they have treasured, what they have invested in. And Bill and Melinda Gates have made a covenant that they are going to give away all of their billions of dollars before they leave this earth. So they're giving away billions of dollars, transforming culture. And what did Jesus say? He said, a good man brings out of the treasure of a good heart good fruit. And by their fruits, you shall know them. So if a man is giving to those millions of people who can't give back to him. 
that ought to tell you something about where his heart is. Now, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm not trying to sanctify him or make him a great holy saint, but it does reflect to me where his heart really is. And, and then that leader began to quote. He said, you know, I've got dozens of young African Americans who would not have engine. He's a, he's a major engineer. He said he would, they would not have engineering and, and computer science degrees if it wasn't for Bill and Melinda Gates. I've got young black men and young black women who are engineers now because of that. And so this misconception, this fear, Oh, he's trying to vaccinate everybody and inoculate everybody. No, you need to listen to the message. He's supporting global health care. And wasn't it amazing last night that the, the, the two Jimmys, when they got ready, along with Colbert, to sign off, uh, I think it was Jimmy Fallon that said last night on the show, he said, um, uh, you know, we're bringing you this, and we're not asking you for any money because it's already paid for. And so what I realized, not only Cisco, not only Procter & Gamble and all of those who had hosted that, but I realized all those who were on it had also given and contributed to make it possible. So a man that has spent billions on disadvantaged people, is it about population control or is it about health care? And that's what you need to listen to. The nations that struggle with poor health care tend to have more children because many of them die. And until he called me and asked me what I thought about it, I said I, I hadn't even had an opportunity to articulate it. Uh, that, that's, that's the false evidence appearing real. But, but you want some real evidence? Yeah, uh, the, a real evidence that a, a bankrupt company was given $55 million out of the SBA fund a fifth of $5 million was given to a bankrupt company to make masks that they don't even produce because the company does not exist. And it's related to the Trump household. I, I said I was going to try to get through a sermon without calling his name. Uh, 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 you, want, you want to know what really is true? Uh, it is true that the president knew as early as November 2019 that this COVID virus was coming around. And now he's throwing blame on any and everybody along the way. And the reason why he has deferred all of the judgment onto the 50 governors is not because he he doesn't run the show. He just doesn't want to take responsibility for the mess that his negligence has created. You want to know something true? That's true. That his, his advisor, Bolton, fired the entire pandemic team that had been put in place by the previous administration and as early as nine years ago, President Obama told us that this kind of thing would come up because the medical science community had said that it would. Jesus comes when we're not at, at our best. And he shows up when we need him the most. And I'm telling you, I'm so glad he showed up because he showed up when I was not at my best. What were you, Reverend? I was sinking deep in sin. I was far from the peaceful shore. I was very deeply stained within. I was seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted me. Now safe am I. He he didn't come when I was at my best. He came when I was at my worst. Uh, and so you know how we are. Jesus does a virtual drop by when they were not at their best. Finally, not only does Jesus uh, manage his own schedule, not only does Jesus come when we're not at our best, Number three, Jesus brings what we need the most. <laughs> uh, Jesus brings what we need the most. As I watched the Global Citizen show last night and many Facebook comments, I mean from Italy, Malaysia, Ecuador, China, everywhere, they were popping up and people of all colors, all races, all beliefs, 
were saying this is just what we needed. We needed to be able to share in community and just receive some encouragement. And I, I said to myself as I was watching this, I said, uh, where are all those 350,000 churches? Where are all the denominations? And if the world can put together something like this, just in the name of my brother and my sister, how much more so ought we do? And it, it challenged me. And so Jesus comes to, to give us what we need the most. People of all over the world, people from different ethnic origins, were, were encouraged because they heard hope in the midst of crisis and peace in the midst of confusion. <laughs> and, 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 and so when Jesus comes in on his virtual visit, he, he, he manages his own schedule. He, 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 he comes in uh, uh, when we're not at our best, but then he comes in with what we need the most. And before Jesus begins the litany of, man, let me tell you what it's like. The first thing he says is, let me just bring some peace. And he opens his mouth and just says, peace. Peace. You need some peace in the midst of this confusion. You need some peace in the midst of this crisis. You need some peace, the kind of peace that I started talking to you about over in John 17 before I left. I left it with you, but let me come back and pick it up again. I speak peace. Peace in your life. People of color are dying in disproportionate rates. And listen to this, because of existing conditions, pre-existing, and poor health care. Ah, first thing that Jesus deals with is you're going to need some peace. Why peace? Because that's what we need the most. The power of the spoken blessing was the natural manifestation that if Jesus speaks peace, it is peace. Well, with that, those, 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 those group of disciples, he had a little history of that. You remember when they were in the ship and the ship was being tossed and Jesus was down, down in the, uh, uh, the hull of the ship. He was down having him a good nap with a pillow and the ship was just tossing and turning and they woke him up and said, Jesus, don't you care that we're perishing? And Jesus was like, um, wait a minute, you don't want to know if I care. That's not the real question. The real question you have is not do I care, it's am I in charge? <laughs> that, 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 that's what you really want to know. You're, you're down here you're bailing out water and crying and carrying on, and the reason you woke me up is because uh, we, you believe not that I'm just going to feel good about you, not I'm just going to love you, but my love is going to cause my, me to do something to change your situation. So love is not the issue here. You want to know, do I have the authority? And so he comes and stands at the bow of the ship, and he just looks at the storm and says, peace. <laughs> That's all he said. That's all he said. He looks at the storm and says, peace. And, 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 and watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. He never looked at the disciples and said, I just love you. Uh, he didn't look at the disciples and say, give me a hug. Uh, he looked at that storm and he said to those disciples in that room, peace. Because that's what we need the most. Peace. It's been interesting to see how we have adapted to uh, being particularly parents of children and those who are here with us and tuned in with us today. You are parent, you are principal, uh, you are teacher, and uh, one of my colleagues, and I won't uh, name him this morning, is a little father up north. He posted this week, he said, um, uh, he said he's the principal of the school, his own school, he named his last name, he's a prominent uh, pastor, and, and he said, um, he said, and the principal uh, had to uh, take this very action uh, with the teacher, <laughs> because the teacher 
was the following structure. <laughs> and of course, he was talking about his wife, and he said, oh, but after I had a consultation with the teacher, then the school was able to operate a little better, and we had a wonderful afternoon. We find ourselves in roles that we normally didn't have to be in. And Jesus showed the evidence of his ability to get to the other side of trouble. He shows up, nail prints and all, wound in his side, and he steps in the room and just says, peace. I just want you to be in the room for a second. You're hearing him say peace, but you're also looking at him knowing what he has been through. And while you're looking at him and realizing what you, he has been through, it ought to occur to you that if he's spoken peace and peace got him through, then his peace will get me through whatever I am dealing with in my life. They were sitting there and realizing that I'm in fear, but I don't have to be because here is the prince of peace, and he's speaking peace. And I see the nail prints in his hand. I see uh, the mark in his side, and I realize if you can get through that, I know I can make it. Yeah. Disciples were overjoyed because they saw that he made it through to the other side of suffering. And the one that can help get him, got him through, is the same one that's going to get us through. And that's why we ought to be thankful for even this virtual moment, no matter how long it takes, no matter how long it is, no matter how long we have to gather and meet in this way, we ought to be thankful because we know on the other side there is a breakthrough that's on the other side and when we get to the other side hey, when all of God's children get together what a time what a time what a time a virtual visit from a very real and living Savior today my brothers and sisters we extend this virtual visit from the Lord Jesus right where you are. Right where you are. Jesus manages his own schedule. He's going to come when he wants to come. Jesus comes when we're not at our best. I'm so glad that he'll catch you right now. You may say, oh, Reverend, I, 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 came, I came in by audio today because I hadn't, you know, I hadn't fixed my my hair and, and all of that. I didn't want to be in video live and all of that. And, and I understand that. And he catches us when we're not at our best. And I'm so thankful. But then when he comes, he gives us what we need the most. <laughs> it's the same thing he started before he left. He said, my peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. Not like the world gives. This peace will carry you through. It's the same peace that, that, that I calmed the storm with. It's the same peace that I delivered the, 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 uh, uh, the demoniac in the, in the tombs with. It's the same peace that I brought into the lives of millions. And that same peace is available to us. You say it's a virtual visit, yeah? Here's the thing about God. He is everywhere all at the same time through the power of his holy spirit and so today my brothers and my sisters we extend this opportunity for you to get to know jesus for yourself he'll make a virtual visit right into your home <laughs> you, you 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 i don't know when he'll come but if you call him right now he'll he'll answer uh, uh, uh when he comes he He'll find you not at your best. Don't worry about it. You can just be just like you are. He got you. And he'll give you what you need most. And in this particular time and in this particular season, we need his peace. Paul would later say it's the kind of peace that passes my understanding. I can't figure out how am I making it from day to day? How, how am I going to get through? <laughs> It's because of his peace. <laughs> you are my peace. You are. 
wherever you are right now as we're just hearing this melody you are my peace and I worship thee wherever you are right now at your kitchen table in your living room let's pray this prayer together Lord Jesus I thank you come on let me hear you say Lord Jesus I thank you that you make house calls you bring good news and you also make virtual visits I, I, I receive that today and I ask that you forgive me from my sins I believe in my heart that you are the Savior of the world and I confess you are my Lord and you are my Savior forgive me cleanse me fill me with your Holy Spirit speak peace into my life and I receive it today in Jesus name amen now, now my brothers and my sisters wherever you are if you have prayed that prayer <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even have to guess. I don't even have to figure it out. I just know that when we call on his name, he shows up, he manifests, he brings us his peace. And if you have not known the Lord Jesus Christ and you prayed that prayer today and given your life to Jesus Christ, want to be in touch with you. If you're already a member of your church, get in touch with your pastor and say, hey, you know, I got saved. I was watching uh, Union Bethel that morning. I heard a word that Jesus would make a virtual visit in my life. Uh, but if you are without a church home, we invite you to connect with us virtually and online. Uh, it's all right. Amen. It's virtually and online that your soul can be fed and blessed and nourished in the way of the Lord. And we pray God's blessings upon you in Jesus name in Jesus name amen God bless you beloved and we thank God for this opportunity to share with you on another virtual online worship Sunday morning we thank God for all of those who are on Facebook those who are streaming those who are in the phone conference call we bless God for you we want to thank God for the stewardship and faithfulness of the church body, and we give God praise and glory for your gifts. And thank you for sowing seeds, amen, into the ministry, your tithes and your offerings. And I'm blessed, uh, uh, just blessed immeasurably. Uh, and when God does that, when God blesses, I just say, Lord, how can I be a blessing and share? And in weeks to come, we're work doing some other things to make a difference in the lives of particularly our first responders, our health care workers, our, our law enforcement our persons, EMTs, everybody in and around uh, who is working so hard. And we bless the Lord for all of them. And thank you for continuing to work and labor in what God has called us to do. And so we give God praise and glory. It's giving time. And up on the screen, you'll see instructions that if you're watching, uh, you can give that way through Realm, through Givelify. Uh, just find Union Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church. For our members and those who desire, there is that mail-in envelope, and you can mail in your tithes and offerings, and we appreciate the Lord uh, for his goodness. Amen. We, we do this wherever we are. As we give, we lift up our, either our cell phones, envelopes, hands, so wherever you are listening right now, tuning in right now, God, we bless this gift as it comes into your house. Bless the seed and the sower, the gift and the giver, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go ahead and hit that give button now and give and celebrate the Lord's presence and then hear some updates and announcements, and I'll be back to you shortly. We sincerely pray that you were empowered by the enriched word of God Ooh, spoken Jesus. through Pastor C. We encourage you to continue That's to tune in to our Sunday broadcast through our website at www.ubame.org, Facebook at Union Bethel AME Church, and conference call number 1563 999 
1571-2090, access code 157147-POUND. Don't miss the dynamic weekly Bible study on Wednesdays at 12.15 and 7.15 p.m. on Facebook and the conference call number. Join us for our early morning prayer call Monday through Saturday at 6 a.m. on conference call number 1563-999-2090, access code 157 one four seven pound. Be encouraged, for Luke one thirty seven reads, "For with God nothing will be impossible." Two thousand twenty, the year of unlimited possibilities. Have a safe and blessed week. Now here's Pastor C with our closing blessings and benediction. Well, God bless you again, beloved, and thank you for tuning in this morning. And we pray God's blessings upon the Union Bethel Church family and all of our friends uh, that have tuned in to be with us. Thank God for our ministerial staff, their faithful labors in this time of social distancing. We praise God for music and worship arts ministry. Amen. And we thank God for our AV team and security and leadership. And we give God praise. Where Jesus made a virtual visit, he He's, he manages his own calendar. He'll show up when we're not at our best. Ah, but when he shows up, he'll give us what we need the most, and that is his peace. And we speak peace into your life. Expect a virtual visit from the Lord. I expect him to show up and to speak peace into your life. Uh, and now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, honor, dominion, and power. May he give you peace, prosperity, and protection both now, henceforth, and forevermore, the people of God said, Amen. Till we meet again, peace to you. <laughs>